Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new season of the European Poker Tour. I'm James Hartigan, he's Joe Stapleton. Hello my babies and welcome to lucky season number 13 where we are smashing records here in beautiful Barcelona. Yes, yeah, somehow this festival just gets bigger every single year. And the biggest buy-in event, the 50K Super High Roller, had more than 100 entries. That means 1.3 million up top. And a fistful of phenoms are trying to claim it, including a guy who seemingly had an obligatory seat at every final table in the past six months. I'm Fedor Holtz, I'm 23, and I'm from Germany. Fedor's an outstanding poker player. His results are out this world. He's a really gifted poker player. He thinks about poker differently. And yeah, he's gone on an amazing run, one of the best runs in the history of poker. It'd be nice to see someone other than Fedor win, as, as much as I love how Fedor plays. His achievements have so far surpassed you know, anything I ever had when I was that young. We'll probably never see something else like this again. He's just been winning tournament after tournament. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. It was certainly, you know, one that should be respected. Feder also is a lucky box. Uh, do, they, do they know that? <laughs> I just wish best uh, of luck to him. I wouldn't be shocked if he won, but if he did, that would be a little ridiculous at this point. Victory would be ridiculous. I would, it would mean so much to me. Seven remain. But can anyone halt halts? We're back in Barcelona for the Pokestars.com EPT Super High Roller. 50,000 euros to play, 5.6 million in the prize pool. High stakes, high pressure, and some of the biggest names in the game. 13 made the money with High Roller regular Phil Gruesome bubbling in 14th. And once the tournament was down to a single table of nine, the fireworks really flew. So three players have shoved. This is a trivial fold, right? Oh. No, what? Yes, I love this guy. Kanga calls with ace five, a four way all in with three players at risk. Nines, kings, tens, ace five, it's a classic cooler. This is about the best fold I could have asked for. Before. I don't know why I just said that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speed on oh, the turn! Oh, boy. <laughs> the river is a deuce. Kings hold, Seidel's eliminated, and Sam Greenwood wins a huge pot. Shortly after busting Seidel, Greenwood took out Julian Stewart, leaving us with the magnificent seven. Topping the leaderboard is Canada's Timothy Adams, being Chip Boss's unfamiliar territory for this high roller regular. I've been at quite a few of these, but never in the chip position I am in now. I made the final table in London, in Monaco as well, and I actually bubbled this exact tournament, I think in 2013. Yeah, I'm like well prepared. Adams isn't the only finalist from the land of the Maple Leaf. Sam Greenwood is looking to improve on his seventh place finish from Monaco. Let's do this. You're in trouble oh, now. I am in trouble. Okay. In third place is the young German Fedor Holtz, who's got the entire poker world asking, how does he do it? I don't think I have some magic trick that just, you know, is better than everyone else. It's just the more you play, the more experience you get, and then I just try to to use it the best possible way. For Sylvain Loosley, it's impossible for him to improve on his result in this tournament from last year because he won it. It's obviously feels great uh, making a final table back to back. I just hope I can do something big again, maybe make history. I'm not sure anyone has won two Super Rivalers before. So if I were the first one to do that, that would be amazing. <laughs> Alexandros Kolonius is no stranger to high stakes life, but he's still licking his wounds from last season's grand final. In the 25K in Monte Carlo, yeah, I came second. 
course, it was a very good score, but I was really disappointed not to win. Ahad Purkanga is the only non-pro at the table, and beating this lineup will be a dream come true. I like the challenge. I am very daring, and I take a lot of risk. To be very honest with you, when I kick ass, I love it. And we love it. Finally, completing a trio of Canadians at the final table is the short stack, Daniel Devoris. Tough competition for the first trophy of EPT 13. Hello, my babies, again. So seven players competing for a seven-figure score. Blinds, 50,000, 100,000 with a 10,000 ante. And the reigning champ of this super high roller to speak first, Sylvain Loosley took home 1.2 million last year. And he folds under the gun. Fedor Holtz with Ace Jack. This kid's earned just under $20 million in his career. And by the way, he's also retired, apparently. He raises to 225,000. And folded around to the big blind, Ahad Purkanga. Oh man, it's domination nation for the Azerbaijani and amateur. Maybe now. Kanga defends, heads up to the flop. All hearts, both players with a flush draw, Holtz with the nut flush draw. Terrible spot for Kanga since his hand would be good here a lot. Action check to the pre-flop aggressor, Fedor continuing for 200,000. Kanga's got just 20 big blinds behind, he is quickly approaching the danger zone. He calls the C-bet. The turn card is the Queen of Hearts. This could spell doom for Kanga. This queen is dangerous and sort of puts Kanga in a zone. I don't know, maybe the danger zone? Okay, we get it. Halts with the nuts. Checks back. Ooh, surprised to see a check back. Fifth heart on the board. I think Fedor is trying to induce a bad bluff from the good amateur. Kanga checks for a third time. I think if Fader knew Kanga's exact hand, he probably would have double barreled this, but he's going for the single river big barrel. Huge bet, 1.4 million into a pot of less than a million. Basically puts Kanga all in. He either folds and he's left with like 17 and a half bigs, or he can stick it all in and go broke. Another bit. You have the ace. Good read. Fedor holds cannot be stopped. Oh wait, except by a crazy amateur from Azerbaijan. Good play. Thanks. Very impressed with that fold. Did you have a flush? I had a flush. On the board. I know. <laughs> you had flush too? Yeah. Don't do it to yourself, Ahadpur. How high? <laughs> Ten high. Ten high? Yeah. I should not fight against you. <laughs> I give up. It's his way or the highway, unless you drove in Iran during the 80s, in which case it could have been both. So everyone now guaranteed nearly 233k, 1.3 million up top, and that would be the biggest score for everyone at this table except Holtz and Loosley. If Fedor wins the 1.3 million here, he will have increased his winnings this year by less than 10%. Pfft, pathetic. Action here is on Sam Greenwood, making his fourth appearance at an EPT Super High Roller final. Raising under the gun, plus one, with king nine of clubs. Now to Loosley. Now Holtz. Timothy Adams, chip leader, in the big blind. 10-7 of diamonds. Tim would probably defend his big blind with two cards that were the same color, let alone suited to Gapper. He calls the raise. These two go to the flop, which sees Adams pair his seven. He's a three to one favorite. 190. Continuation bet from Greenwood. Tim Adams, don't go breaking my heart and don't go folding top pair. He calls. A million in the middle. The turn card. The five of clubs, Greenwood picks up a flush draw and a gut shot. Adam's still best for now. Good spot for Sam to keep barreling. 500,000. Exactly half pot. And yeah, Tim's got top pair, but I can see why he'd take his time before calling. He's got to worry about the third barrel 
And when he is behind, he'll only have two outs. Wow, he folds. Makes sense. It only looks like a bad fold dust because we can see the whole card. Sit down. Greenwood up to 6.3 million. Not that far behind Adams. Well, that's Jason Kuhn with the satchel. He's a friend of both Timothy and Sam. He busted this tournament on day two. Because where Adams is. Hello, hello young people. Don't mind me. Go back to your Snapchapping and your Pokemon video games. So Sam Greenwood first to act now. He's got a pair. Tens. Opens with a raise, 250,000. Pocket eights for the short stack, Daniel Dvoris. Get your triangles out. All in. He shoves. Perfectly standard considering Dvoris' stack. Round to the blinds. Adams, Colonius, they both pass, but Greenwood calls and Dvoris is at risk and a four to one underdog. Dvoris not devoid of hope. Not the best flop in the world for him. Daniel, this is the moment. Mm -hmm. What do you feel? Turner River, what do you think? I would have asked for it right in the Devore. You don't want to let me make a straight, though. That's the best thing about this. If he turns to 10, I actually have more outs. This is starting to devolve. Five on the turn, just two outs for Daniel. He needs an eight. Meditating on you channeling your run good. The river is another five. Devoris departs in seventh place. I see what you did there. You know why he wears glasses? To help with division. Okay, buddy. Good luck. Hey, nice hand, buddy. Sam Greenwood, now chip leader. On Devoris cashes for the better part of 233 grand. We're down to six players. Six of the best. Uh, Daniel, the uh, exit's yeah, over there. Hello, my babies. Want to listen to more of my jokes and embarrassing stories without poker getting in the way? Subscribe to EGT Not Live on iTunes or download it from soundcloud.com slash EGT Not Live. There's guests, competitions, online dating. You can even get some behind-the-scenes gossip on the show you're watching right now. That's right, more layers than an advanced Rubik's Cube, which has two layers. More layers than that. EPT Not Live. Following the departure of Daniel Dvores, we've just lost another player from the final table. The defending champion of the Pokestars.com EPT Barcelona Super High Roller won't be going back to back. Maybe this year, mine. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Sylvain loosely entered into a classic race, but wasn't able to fade the run good of Fedor Holtz. He's playing well, he's running good. What else do we have to say? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's just incredible. You can't, you can't, you can't hide the guy. He's, he's a really nice guy. So. I mean, I wish him good luck, anyway. <laughs> but it's the Canadians who are in control of the final table at the moment. The amateur, Ahadpur Kanga, is now falling into the danger zone. Danger zone! Yes, finally! Blind still 50,000, 100,000 with a 10k ante. Fedor's posted the big blind. Yeah, don't even try. No stealing, please. Oh, I thought that was in response to someone asking for a bathroom break. Better run, Tim! Colonius. There's King Queen under the gun, plus one. He raises to 225,000. Alex Colonius was a tennis coach before he turned to poker. Hashtag fun fact. Four, and I don't do sports. Eight, nine for Fedor, he defends. So what's this gonna be? Nine, 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 eight. I mean, he's got options. Ace, eight, five, Fedor flops best, second pair. You don't say. Checks to the Razor. Who's probably going to feel compelled to continue on an ace high flop. 250,000. It's hard to flop a pair, but it's easy to peel one. Not the fruit. Actually, that's quite difficult. Fedor calls. The turn card is the deuce of spades. Colonius picks up the nut flush draw. 
And even though Fedor's got the best hand, I think he may not be able to call two barrels. And yeah, now he's picked up equity. Colonius fires again, 400,000. Similar to a situation we've already seen, except Fedor didn't even have top hair, and it's even easier for him to be drawing dead. He passes. Colonius wins the pot. See, Fedor is not invincible. Apparently, he's actually capable of losing small, insignificant pots. New level, 6120. That means Kanga is now playing 10 big blinds, and he's in the big blind on this hand. James, what do you call a scam involving Ahad poor Kanga and several shipping containers full of undocumented marsupials? I have no idea. The kangaroos! I mean, come on. Tip your servers. Action's been folded to Sam Greenwood. I got more. A7 in the small blind. On. He shoves on Kanga. Cool. And he calls all in with King Jack suited. Definitely the right call with this dynamic. Sam's happy or maybe smug. I'll give him happy. Almost a race. Kanga with 46%. And he's now in front, flopping top pair. You have the wrong ace. I do have the wrong ace. They're all the right ace if an ace peels on the turn. And let the ace of clubs is right there. Any ace will do, really. Sam's brother Lucas watching from the rail. Turn card. It's an ace! Nine outs for Kanga. Jacks, queens, and kings all working for him. Is he experienced enough to draw out here? I just don't know. Sam has played millions of hands online. He's used to it. The river is an eight. We lose Ad Poor Kanga. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Out in fifth, cashing for 377k. It's been a pleasure. It was a pleasure. His name may have been Ahad Poor, but the joy he brought to our lives has made us all Ahad Rich. So the last remaining amateur is gone. As Sam Greenwood consolidates his chip lead, he can really start piling on the pressure now at this super high roller final table. I think I'm pretty tight, but then once I enter a part, I'm just like, I'm not gonna let it go. I don't know why I just said that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Once I'm at the table, I'm focused. The nervousness and excitement is more in the anticipation of waiting to play, which I'm excited to do. I've been close to this before, you know, like sixth, seventh, a lot of those kinds of finishes, and I'd like to change that, I guess. Not I guess, I would like to change that. At the Super High World of Final Tables, when you look around, the bad players are still like excellent poker players, and it's, it's a poker player thing where like, if you're like the fourth best player in the world, you think like the eighth best player in the world is garbage. And then when I look around at this final table, I think all the remaining players are quite good, but I think I'm ready to win this. James is the fourth best poker commentator in the world. Do you think the eighth best poker commentator in the world is garbage? Yes. It's the nicest thing you've ever said about me. So Greenwood out in front, Colonius the low man at the table. We're gonna sweat with the chip leader on this next hand. We're gonna play it from Sam Greenwood's perspective. That's right, it's sweat with Sam time. Okay, but just because I think it's fun, I'm gonna imagine Sam Greenwood sweats maple syrup. He's first to speak, under the gun. With pocket eights. He raises to 300,000. Fedor halts on the button. We gotta play against Fedor and he's in position. Oh man! Don't panic, he hasn't called yet. Yeah. Um, now he's called. Great. Timothy Adams is in the small blind. And Tim Adams! Oh, man! He calls as well. Colonius does not make this a family part. He folds the big. Great. Thank you. The flop is 10-7-6. Only one overcard to Greenwood's pair. Plus, he has a straight draw. Well, I like to see bet there, but Sam Greenwood's better than I am. Usually, just worse hands are going to fold, I guess. The action check to Fedor Holtz, who bets from the button 500,000. Gets a fold from Tim Adams. He had pocket threes. Well, we can peel, though. 
we could be ahead, and we've got outs for sure, even if we're behind. There's the call, taking us to the turn, which is the six of spades, pairing the board, putting a potential flush draw out there. Once again, Sam has checked it to Fedor. I think a check behind is pretty good for us. Fedor does check behind. I like it. Queen of clubs on the river. Don't love that card, but Fedor shouldn't have too many queens. Sam checks again. Yep, it's not a spot where we could value bet, and it looks like we are going to face a bet from Fedor. 2.1 million in the middle. Holtz bets 975,000. I thought I liked it when Fedor checked back the turn, but I guess like most movies, turns out I like the trailer more than I like the real thing. It's a really tough spot for us. I think Fedor has a 10 a lot. He's gonna have king, queen, and queen jack sometimes. Hold on a second, what is that? Looks like an IV bag. Looks delicious. Mama. Uh, yeah, back to the poker. Even though I'm having a hard time putting Fedor on an actual value hand, he's got fewer bluffs here than a landlocked prairie. You know, bluffs, like in the geographical sense, read a geographical journal sometime. I think we should fold, by the way, if I haven't made that clear. Greenwood does fold. Fedor had king eight of diamonds. It was a bluff. Oh my God, sick bluff Fedor. That bluff was sicker than Linda Blair and the Exorcist. The power of Holtz compels you. Nice play. Line still 60, 120. Tim Adams first to act. He looks down at ace eight, and he's raising 300,000. Kings for Colonius. You can't spell Colonius without cool as I. Look at this guy. Cool. He shoves. All in for just over two million. Sam Greenwood in the small blind. Folds. Fedor Holtz has nines in the big blind. Nines probably just a little too strong to fold. He reshoves. That'll get rid of Tim Adams. It's a showdown and a great spot for Colonius. He is an 81% favorite to double up here. Poor Fedor. This might send him back to retirement. Here comes the flop. Nine in the door. Fedor Holtz is like Nibbler from Futurama. Adorable, but he will eat you. Colonius now needs a king. Fedor, a 91% favorite to eliminate the Greek. And a rail is developing to see just how many people Fedor can swallow. The turn card is a four. So can Colonius hit a two-outer against Fedor Holtz? 5% chance of survival. No king on the river. Colonius out in fourth. Sorry, buddy. Good game. You know how the Greeks invented everything. Technically, they invented bad beats, too. And to be fair, lots of people play poker in retirement. Alex Colonius will collect nearly 468,000 euros. And Fedor halts is now second in chips, closing in on Sam Greenwood. Well, if you'd like the opportunity to play with some of the game's greats and join us on the tour, you could qualify for a main event at PokerStars.com. We're down to three at the PokerStars.com EPT Barcelona Super High Roller final table, where Fedor Holtz is still calling the shots. Fedor, are you too rich to talk a deal? Uh, I feel like playing right now. You feel like playing? You got all the momentum. Of course you want to play. 
Saved us all some time. Don't come crawling back to us. <laughs> well, I'm just having too much fun. Just say you're too rich. Hmm? Just say you're too rich. <laughs> too rich. No, it, actually, it doesn't have much to do with that. Timbo, ease up on the peer pressure. Jeez. In the last six months, Fedor has won almost $11 million. He's got kings here in the small blind. Lead us to kings. And he just limps. Ace jack for Timothy Adams. The first decree, Fader Holtz wins every tournament ever. The second decree, there will be no deals and all other players will be coolered. Adams raises to 425,000. The third decree, all slow played monsters will work out wonderfully. Fedor responding with a re-raise. He three bets to 1.37 million. I think Tim's going to expect Fedor to be messing around a fair bit here. And his hand actually flopped relatively well in this situation, so I think we might see a call. And Adams would have the advantage of position. There's the call. 2.8 million in the middle already. Adams the effective stack with 4.6 million behind. 10.99. So Adams with a couple of back doors. Holtz a four to one favorite with Kings. In general, it's a pretty awful flop for Ace Jack. Fedor continuing. For roughly one third pot, 980,000. Does Tim really want to go to war with Ace Jack High? No, he folds. And with that pot, Fedor Holtz takes the chip lead. Good fold, Tim. Definitely got bluffed there. Hmm? I definitely got bluffed there. Fatal bluff me. That's unfair. I had I had eight. <laughs> yeah, that was embarrassing. You you can't you're not supposed to be able to have a hand like King Eight suited when I have eight. I put you on nines. Blimey, he's good. <laughs> Fedor, I would put you on under nines and under nine soccer team, you little cutie patootie. Queen four suited or something? Queen four suited? If your gut tells you I had queen four suited, why do you fold then? Owned! <laughs> Queen for suited or like, you know, kings? Like 9-4. Nine, nine Fedor Holtz, so good it's like he has three cards. 9-9-4 nine, nine, is exactly middle of his three card range. Blinds are up to 81-60. Greenwood has limped in the small with 3-4 of spades. Holtz with king-queen of clubs raises from the big. Speaking of hands that are like getting three cards, Queen suited. Sam is out of position with four high. He's not going to be calling very often here. But that doesn't mean he's always folding either. Oh, there's the re-raise. And once again, we see someone playing back at Fedor Holtz when he has a strong hand. That is very unfortunate because Fedor is in position and has all the chips. I'd say there's a pretty good chance he calls. He does call. Like most of the love making at Glastonbury, this is intense. 3.3 million chip pot. And not much for anyone on the flop. King High still ahead. Yeah, nobody's even flopped a draw, so this pot can't get too much bigger. Well, Greenwood had the pre flop betting lead. And he's going to continue here for 920,000. This is kind of like that last hand, only Sam's the one who's bluffing and Fedor's hand is way worse than King's. You know what, maybe it's not that similar to the last one.
Doesn't look like Fedor's done with this. He calls in position. We're going to the turn. How does he know? It's an inconsequential deuce. And Greenwood slows down, checks the action to halts. I don't want to say he's giving up, but he's certainly opening the door. The Fedor. Holtz is taking over the betting. What a boss. Eight hundred and seventy-five thousand with the best hand. I don't want to say Fedor Holtz is a boss, but right now he's chewing out Sam Greenwood over his pieces of flair. Greenwood passes. And Fedor Holtz continues to crush. He is such a boss, his two assistants are Dwight Schrute and Waylon Smithers. Sam Greenwood lost a decent chunk of his stack there. Meanwhile, Fedor has moved up over the 14 million mark. He now has a commanding chip lead over Greenwood and Adams. What is the secret of his success? I've always been into mental coaches. It's like a really good friend that has a lot of experience that is not emotionally attached to you. Elliot is my mindset coach. We started October last year, and pretty much every single time we had uh, a session, I just won a tournament. I don't know if he's the reason, but there is some correlation. I won the one drop in Vegas, and I won three other um, high rollers in the area. It was like an, a very, incredible journey and I enjoyed every minute of it. I played literally every day in the last four years. I mean, I think I had like over 150 flights in the last 500 days or something. Just like every four days you're sitting in a plane. It's very, very draining and I just needed a little break um, physically and mentally to like recover and maybe just spending a day uh, relaxing and like enjoying the sun and going outside. And uh, it's nice. I'm not going to come back for the full-time grind. Yeah. I will play like 10% 10, 10 of what I, what I used to play. Since I came back, I've probably played like the best I've played this whole year. If I go back two months, I had this really competitive uh, thing in me. It was like, okay, I have to, you know, like make as much money as I can. But I think that's the wrong approach. Just say you're too rich. <laughs> too rich. <laughs> That wasn't the reason why I started playing poker in the first place. It was like passion for, for the game and the competition, and that's what I wanted to go back to. It's not about the money for Fedor, which is why you can often see him grinding it out on the play money tables on... Oh, wait, no, you can't. Well, right now he has more than his two opponents combined. Blinds are still 8160, and we are going to sweat with Fedor. We'll play this hand from his perspective. Jack, seven of clubs. If I had Fedor's money, I would have my ability to sweat genetically redacted. Looks like he's raising from the button. 375,000. It's a fold from Adams in the small. Greenwood in the big. Defends. Fedor has had Sam's number so far today. Let's see if it continues. Fedor flops bottom pair and a gut shot. The action's been checked to him. It's a fun looking flop for us, but it looks better than it really is. Fedor checks behind. Check of hearts on the turn, two pair now. See, we improved, but it's kind of a bunk improvement and Sam could have improved way more. And for the second street in a row, it goes check, check. The river. The six of clubs. It's a small pot. There's no need for us to go nuts protecting. Plus, at this point, we can induce a lot of bluffs when we check twice. 890,000 in the pot. And Greenwood bets pretty much full pot. 870k. Snap on the turn, huh? No, I don't like this one bit. Normally, I'm snap calling, but now I don't feel that good anymore. What do you think, Sam? 
Sam's pretty sure we're gonna make the right decision either way. This went from a small pot to a not so small pot. And Fedor's really only beating bluffs. I think it's way too likely Sam's got a nine here. Fedor calls. Greenwood has a straight. Very obvious. He flopped it. I mean, it checked down on two streets. Even when Fedor gets cooler, he manages to lose the minimum. Nice value bet on the end there, Sam. Nice value bet, buddy. He's not your buddy, guy. <laughs> well, Sam's going to be first to speak on this next hand. There's the button. I thought the button meant you go last. Sigh. Oh, Ace King suited. He raises to 400,000. Fedor folds the small blind. Timothy Adams in the big. Has deuces. This is shaping up to be a standard three handed flip. Um. Adams shoves. Greenwood calls, and this is a huge race. Nearly 11 million in the middle. Gigantic race, like brunch versus sleeping in. Adams is the player at risk, but if Greenwood loses this flip, he'll be left with just a bowl of rice. It's a terrible brunch food. Oh, well, Tim knows that isn't good for business. Oh, deuces. Sigh. Greenwood now a 91% favorite. Queen doesn't change anything. Still a two outer needed for Tim Adams to survive. The river card is a 10, and Tim Adams is out in third. GG. Yeah. All right, good luck, boys. Yeah. Good playing with you guys. So we're down to two, Sam Greenwood. Heads up against Fedor Holtz in this super high roller. If Sam wins all the cash, we'll have to change his last name to Green. Oh, wait. Good luck, guys. Timothy Adams cashes out for nearly 600,000 euros. Playing, playing the final boss now, is that how it works? <laughs> last level. Last level. Yeah, end, end game. Yeah. We're heads up at the Pokestars.com EPT Barcelona Super High Roller. Only Sam Greenwood stands in the way of Fedor Holtz's continued domination of poker. But this will be no small task for the German. Stacks are even, and both players have talent and experience. I think he's one of the toughest opponents in these fields. I haven't seen him make any mistakes, so that's always going to be tough to play against. I feel personally that you learn the most from the toughest opponents. But I've talked to a lot of you know, I get heads up now that I'm going to play with and I have a pretty good strategy. The last two heads ups, I wasn't really happy with my performance, so I worked on that. We're both aggressive players. I guess neither of us really wanted to give an inch. I've been playing the best I've played probably this whole year. Good luck. Good luck. I can never tell poker players are unfriendly or just awkward. Well, both these guys are pretty even in chips. Blinds are 80, 160. Fedor's first to act here on the button in the small blind. They're also nearly even in skill level, and because they're poker players, they both probably think that that's incorrect. So Fedor raises with 9-7. Greenwood defends with queen-7. Sam is 2-3 in, in heads-up situations. Fedor, 10-6. Wow, it's a 7-high flop. Top pair for both players. Greenwood with the better kicker. Fedor's going to continue. 575,000. Sam looks so serious. I think we're mostly going to see a call here. But note, we are seeing the rare top pair good kicker flop check raise. 1.9 million total. And somehow Fedor's got the exact hand Sam wants him to have, a worse top pair. Holtz calls. The pot is now 4.6 million. Turn card 
is an ace that could slow them both down. Scare card. Sam checks. Spooked ya. Fedor checks behind. Spooked him too. And Fedor gets there on the river. OMG, run better, Fedor. He improves to two pair. Greenwood has checked the action to him. I'm going to change the G in OMG to F for Fedor because he is running like gosh. Ooh, this is a chunky bet. 2,475,000. Just over half pot. In general, it's really hard for this card to have helped Fedor. Sam might just grit his teeth and call. He does call. Fedor shows the winning hand. Yeah. I feel you, bro. I mean, I, I don't actually feel it, but I can tell. King seven. What? King seven. Queen seven. Yeah, I mean, why even bother keeping your hands a secret from him anymore? Play him face up. Nothing you do matters. So they were even at the start of this heads up battle, but Fedor's put some significant distance between them now. Great to see some stars of British screen here. Clive Owen, Rachel Weiss, Michael Caine. Love the prestige. Blinds are up. 100,000, 200,000 with a 25,000 ante. Sam Greenwood at a significant chip disadvantage. First to act here. 9-7 off, he calls. Fedor with queen four in the big blind checks his option. No reason to make this pot any bigger. Well, the flop gives Sam second pair. Fedor with a flush draw and a no good gut shot. I already don't like where this is headed for Sam. Well, he is a 55% favorite here. He bets 300,000. Yeah, I've heard that one before. His draw halts calls. So many bad cards for Sam on the turn. Well, that's actually a great card for Sam and a horrible card for Fedor. He has the baby end of the straight. Sam has the daddy end. For once. Greenwood now a 75% favorite. About to bet again. 625k. Now, obviously, when Fadar calls here, it's not because of the baby straight. It's the heart draw. I'm sorry. Did I need to specify that? It would have helped. The river card. It's a heart. Fadar gets there again. Oh, my goodness, Fadar. Please stop. You know, I thought uh, these guys might have been here to rail you, but now I think they're here to take you away like 11 from Stranger Things. He's just too powerful. And Fedor's going to lead the river. 2.3 million in the middle. He bets 625,000. Oh, it's so annoying. He's got a call. The literal cycle from Sam Greenwood. And what can he do here? I mean, Fedor's running so golden. Definitely some frustration involved there. How in the fudge does he always have it? Fedor Holt closing in on another major title. 22 million plays, 3 million. Sam Greenwood on the ropes. This seems nearly insurmountable. Sam has suited connectors, six five of hearts. Very likely to have live cards. All on. He shoves. 
And get snap called by Fedor with Ace King. Sam's not in terrible shape. The sixes and fives are live. Three hearts are good. Four hearts, bad. As things stand, Fedor holds a 58% favorite to win this tournament. A king. That's a good turn. Oh. But a straight draw. <laughs> That's a well above average flaw point to throw the king in the door. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that's well above average against me. You don't even wait for like the second card. You just get it in the door every time. Yeah. Fade the door. Oof. <laughs> More outs for Sam. Can I get a face down? Can, you, can, I, can I get a face down? Can you, can you spin it? Sam needs a three or an eight. Did anyone fall the three or an eight? The river is a queen and Fedor Holtz is the champion. You either destroyed me, huh? You either destroyed me or I ran really well. Uh, you ran really well. I am, I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. I Just uh, running too hot. Yeah. Can't, can't do much against that. You can always get your twin brother to kick his butt in the parking lot. Okay, just a thought. I think Lucas should give Sam a hug. That was brutal. Boom! Sick. Oh Got it. <laughs> oh man, was, I don't know what's so great. The heater continues as Fedor Holtz wins another major title, another super high roller, and another seven figure score. Fedor Holtz, you put on a master class as far as we're concerned. How do you think you played today? I think today I didn't have too many tough decisions. I ran really hard, obviously. <laughs> So uh, I think my opponents had a lot more to struggle because I always had good hands and, um, yeah. Are you happy that you came out of retirement? And is this, is this it now? Are you going back into retirement? No, I mean, uh, I come out like once every three months and uh, play a little. Um, and I think now it's time to enjoy the beach and enjoy the retirement. <laughs> Fedor Holtz is here to stay or not. I'm not really sure, who knows. Let's get a big round of applause for him, your EPT 13 Barcelona Super High Roller Champion. It was a nice experience. Uh, really enjoyed it. It was awesome. Fedor Holtz! I should not fight against him. <laughs> I give up. Maybe this year? Mine. <laughs> Morning. I don't think I did anything specifically crazy today, but I trusted my instinct a little more than I normally do. Definitely got blocked there. Fatal blocked me. You're not supposed to be able to have a hand like King A2 did when I have eight. I put you on nines. Winning an event like this is obviously unbelievable to some extent. Playing the final boss now, is that how it works? I think the only thing I can do is just enjoy the moment and be with my friends and just celebrate it.